Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday, and in this video we're going to learn some different ways to do linking and routing in Next.js. And it came about because I saw a question uh, somewhere online, I don't remember where, asking if uh, Next.js has a redirect component. Um, some of the other routing libraries like, I believe React Router has something like this where you can say return redirect to um, say the about page. And basically, if some condition's true, if condition, you would put that and move that in there, you would redirect uh, sort of by returning, I think that's declarative redirecting. Uh, no Next.js does not have this, but we're gonna create one today. And we're gonna cover some other ways you can do routing in Next.js as well. I've put a commit right now where we're at, so if anyone wants to follow along, uh, please be welcome. What we're doing is we're in a Next.js application. Um, we're using no additional packages. So if you go to the package JSON, you get only the packages required for Next.js. But I've already set up the imports. So we're going to be working with the use router hook to, to access the Next.js router. And we're going to be using the link component as well. So in this little component, I've got Next.js sort of linking and routing and then native linking and routing. So native, I have two options. Uh, option one is the good old uh, a tag with an href. So this is just linking to the about page, which is here and says nothing except this is the about page. So if we go to the web, we can click this link and it will take us over. See, it took a sec though, like it's not a long second, but you click it, takes a second to load. It's, it's re-rendering everything. It's remounting React and all of that stuff. Um, when you do linking in Next.js, it won't have to remount React and do all of that, so it's quite a bit quicker. Here's another way. It's sort of doing it uh, imperatively, sort of in code. Um, button on click, what we're doing is we're basically replacing the window.location.href with the about page. So this is another way, by clicking this button, it will link us over to the about page. So why don't we do the same sort of thing in Next.js? So the first thing we're going to use is the link component. So we'll just throw this here. And the way link component works is that we're gonna give it an href. So we're also gonna send this to the about page. And inside of here, you put an a tag, but you don't put the href here. Um, link will take care of all of that for us. All we need to do is say HTML link Actually, this would be the next link, right? Pop over to the browser. Uh, let's go back to the home page. So, boom, that takes us to the about page. So, really simple, but see how quick it is? This one, remount, it takes a second, it's spinning. The other one, it's instant, happens right away. And that's because Next.js is handling all of that. It's doing single page apps, so it's, it's changing out the page component without having to re remount React and all of that stuff. So that's step one. The next one we're going to cover is basically the same idea as this here that we're doing in the button, except we're going to do that using React Router instead. So what we're going to do first of all, and we'll just do it below these comments here. This is so I can remember what we're actually gonna cover in this video. Uh, we'll do it right here. So the first thing we need to do is use the use router hook from next router. So this gives us the router and we say use router, uh, router. And router has some, some functions we can call to transition the user to a different page. So we'll put a button here and we'll say, just take us to the about page, but we're gonna do that in an on click inside of a, an arrow function here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say router push. So what this does is it pushes the user to, um, to the about page, but it will do it using the next routing so it won't have to remount React and it will be just as quick as, as doing it with a link and way quicker than doing it using the native functionality here. So if we click the about, that pops us over to the about page um, really quickly. Why don't we put them in the same order as our other one so that it looks nice like that? Yeah, that's, what, that's right. Okay, so it's time to create um, a redirect component now. So what we're going to do 
is uh, we'll just declare this function functional component right here. So we're going to call it redirect. We're going to pass in a prop called two. And then inside of here, we'll, we'll handle all of the redirect. So what we need here is we need access to the router because that's how you push the user to a new page. So we're going to say uh, router is use router hook to give us that. And what we're actually going to do is do the actual redirecting um, inside of a use effect hook. So what we're going to do is we're going to say use effect like this and we uh, will pass in the two prop here so that whenever the two prop changes is when this use effect will be triggered. And what we'll do inside of this use effect is basically the same idea as router.push here. So we'll say router.push to the two prop that's passed in. And because use effect happens after the initial render, we're just going to return um, null. That's sort of what's rendered. Um, and then the use effect will take in and the user will be pushed to whatever the two is. But it's so fast that you won't even see this null, so I wouldn't worry about that. But um, so we have to use our redirect component down here. And we could just say redirect to the about page um, like that and return it. And essentially, as soon as you render the home page, it instantly kicks you over to the about page because it's happening right, that's what's returning. But why don't we sort of control it with state instead so that it's when the user triggers something. I'm getting all these uh, work pop-ups popping up here. Um, okay, so we're gonna create some state first. Uh, so we'll call it uh, should redirect and set should redirect is equal to use state false. So what we'll do is we'll say if should redirect that's when we're going to return this redirect component. So now we need to set up a button that toggles the state so that it re-renders, so that the return is, is what's returned, and then that's what will trigger this redirect code up here. So we're just gonna create a little button. Um, we'll call it uh, redirect, and we'll say on click, what we're going to do is we're going to say set should redirect to true, just like that. So we go to the home page. We have our redirect. When I click this, it will toggle the state, triggering a re-render, which will return this redirect component, which will, after the initial render in the use effect, um, the router will push to the to the new page, whatever we passed in as a prop here. So clicking that, it was so fast, right? But there's a lot of stuff happening when you click this little redirect button. So that's another way that you can do it. Um, another way we could maybe control whether a redirect isn't through our own state, but maybe when there's something in the, uh, the URL here, um, maybe when there's a parameter Let's, let's actually add it in, a query parameter of count is, whenever count is equal to five, it's gonna redirect. So we wanna get access to this and check to see if it's equal to five. So what we'll do is using the router, we wanna get access to its query params. So we'll say const um, query is equal to router. And why don't we just take a look at what's inside of the query. So we'll do a console.log to get access to the query. And we can see here it's five down here, but if we refresh, it's actually rendered empty for the very first time, and then it re-renders with the five in there. And the reason it does that is because Next.js is generating this page statically, so it has no sort of concept of what's in your URL. It, re it renders first without any concept of what's in the URL. Then the router kicks in and it re-renders with the query parameters. So you're not, you have to sort of keep that in mind as you're building this, that it won't have 
the query parameters on the very first render often. So count equals five. So why don't we just put that into a variable here? So const count is equal to, and what we'll say is, um, we'll say query dot count. Um, it may not be there on the first render. So if that's the case, we'll just default to one. And because this always comes in as a string, this here, we're going to parse it. So we'll say parse int um, using a base of 10, so normal sort of integers. And now we have a count. And you'll actually see that it's one quickly, and then it quickly takes over back to five when it has that. Um, so what we could do is we could say, um, if count is equal to five, I don't know why you would redirect when count is equal to five, but take me to the about page. So it already took me there. Why don't we go back and we'll say count equals four. Nope, it's all good. As soon as it hits five, it will redirect to the about page. So the reason I sort of set up this count, uh, a was to show you how the query, how you can access the query params and a different way we can sort of use our redirect component, but also to show how something called shallow routing works. Um, shallow routing is basically a way in Next.js to change the query parameters, which will trigger a re-render to give you the new query data without triggering all of the data loading functions that Next.js comes with. Um, what is it like get initial state, get server side props, all of those things. You can basically change the URL only on the same page. So it can't be on a different page, but you can change it on the same page, triggering a re-render without using loading all of that data again. So you can use this in a sense to store some state in the URL. So what we're going to do is we're going to have um, increment uh, button here and we'll show the count state here. So if we were to come back increment one right now, because that's what count is. And on click, what we're going to do is trigger a shallow render that will increment that count and change the URL um, without sort of doing all of that data, those data fetching methods. Um, we're not using those here, but if we did have them, they wouldn't be running. So what we'll do is we'll say router.push and we need to tell it what URL to push it to. So we're gonna push it to the same page, the home page, and we're gonna say the count is now equal to count plus one. So whatever the increment is. The next one is as URL. Um, in their example, it looks like you can just pass undefined. I think you would do that when it's the same. If someone wants to correct me in the comments, please uh, be welcome. Uh, to do that, um, masks URL for the browser performs a push state with arguments. So I think this is when you're using dynamic routing where the, the, the file-based routing has dynamic placeholders and you want to have the URL be different than the component you're actually rendering. Maybe we'll do a different video on dynamic routing, but for now we'll just put in undefined and we'll pass an option that says shallow true. So Clicking this will update the URL to this, triggering a re-render, getting us the new query parameters, and it will do it in a shallow way to avoid data fetching. So increments to two, three, four. As soon as I hit five, it does the redirect. So we are essentially storing and changing state inside of our, um, inside of our URL. So like this. The cool thing is doing it this way. A lot of maps do that. So you're moving around the map because then if you were to take the URL, paste it to your friend and they would load it, they get the exact state that you have because the state is buried in the URL, not inside of in react state, which you can't really copy and paste. So that's an interesting way of managing state using um, shallow rendering in Next.js. And that's all I wanted to copy today. We basically learned how to, to do linking using the link component, imperatively using router.push. We created our own redirect component that's essentially using this router.push functionality inside of a useEffect. And then we took a look at how to access 
uh, query parameters from the router and then basically how to use that to store state so that when it counts up to five via these uh, shallow renders down here, it's going to transition to the about page using this redirect component that we built. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.